salutations everyone i'm your bikoshi and welcome back to month of despair where i try and finish the dangaral bus series in about a week or less and in in the end i might just kill myself so we are now in the second half of Danganronpa 3 Despair Arc. So, well, let's just go and just dive on into episode 6 and see who oh, what's going to happen cuz I'm scared <laughs> to see what's going to happen next. I know what's going to happen. Everything is going to go to shit, but I'm scared to wonder how it plays out. So, let's have a bit of hope that things won't go to shit. <sighs> Fuck, this started off so sad. Chiaki wearing her iconic hoodie. She is waiting for Hajime, but he doesn't come. She's sad, depressed, and she regrets saying that she'll see him tomorrow. In the class, she seems so happy and energetic around her friends in the class, but I'm guessing they don't hang out outside of school, so I guess Hajime was her friend that she would be with outside of school, which makes sense. Which is actually pretty depressing, you know? her waiting for him, and he's not coming back. Not only that, the fucked up things that they did with Hajime. They took away his personality, they, his senses, everything about him that made him human. Like, post-peak experiment the shit out of him and made him into this emotionless person that is bored about everything. Even though if he has, even though he has every talent ever that they put inside of him. It's just awful. Like he doesn't feel any remorse or pain or whatever. Yet when he meets Junko for the first time, he's willing to take up on that offer on despair with her. Because maybe it could be a good deal of fun or something exciting. Nagito is still missing, so we don't know what happened to him. Which I'm concerned because Nagito is probably doing some fucked up shit right now, and it's insane to think that Nagito might be doing something creepy right now and we don't know what to do. But, Junko's already doing her thing, planning destruction, planning her her great crusade for an ultimate despair. And she did that by kidnapping a trustee, taking, scooping up his eyeball with the curry spoon that she was eating with. And Makuro, my God, she's accepting of the abusive relationship she has with her sister Junko. And it's insane. Like I, like, I don't know why Makuro stays. Junko doesn't give a shit about her. Yet, I guess Makuro's thinking that this is how Junko expresses his love, her love for her. You know, we know what she does to her sister at the, at the start of Danganronpa 1. But, uh, This is... This is getting really, really depressing and sad. Even if Chisai, I don't know if she's gonna survive this because we all know what happens to her. She becomes a remnant of despair. And it's scary. But now we are now in the point where Junko meets Ryota. And that is, oh boy, that is now scary right now because now Junko sees him and she sees it as a faithful encounter that she need him for something. And we all know what Ryota did in future arc. He had, arc, he had his, um, he had his, uh, 
creepy ass visual animation that made everyone commit suicide that they used on three on the future on, on the future foundation and this is oh god this is not gonna go good i don't i am i know what's gonna happen like i know what's gonna happen but that doesn't mean it's easy to see it it's difficult to watch it but let's jump on episode seven because Let's see how things could get worse. I'll be waiting, said Izuru. Oh, I'm so scared. I am legit scared. I am not kidding. I am legit fucking scared. Um, okay, so... After we find out that Ryota's anime uses basically hypnotism or in this case brain manipulation we find out that he's using that because I guess he's gonna go and hypnotize people's minds into being more hopeful because his anime is, is, is made to help the world he wants anime to help people even though this experiment might screw up because it's not gonna make people hopeful or not have anything because we all know what happened. He said that his anime was gonna remove despair, like it was gonna destroy despair for good. And they think that's a bad idea because people without despair, they won't be as much hopeful, more or less, they won't be moralistic. It'll be like a wee happy few, like people will just always be happy and not depressed and they will have no moralistic values whatsoever and be assholes. And of course, Junko is forcing him to make the stuff, even though it doesn't look like he's forced to do it. And Junko's make him feel comfortable, feel happy, like, oh yeah, sure, I'm gonna help you out. Nagito, for some reason, the most hilarious thing ever. The reason why he's gone. He was in a plane. It crashed. He's in some remote fucking place somewhere in the desert with a waterfall, washing himself, singing singing the song to the to the opening of of the of the of the opening theme song to Despair Arc. And he's like, how lucky I am to fall across this oasis right here. Here when my plane crash, I am a lucky student after all, and everything like that. This is the scariest thing. So, Junko finally tests her experiment on seeing what she can do to make things, what people will go for when they have despair, and that is leverage. Junko pulls out like she goes and takes these uh, council members or, or these, these student council members and makes them kill each other to the song I don't know the name of the song but there's a song that I heard that she has that Junko wants Makuro to sing and this song is um, from I remember hearing the song in Evangelion you cannot advance and this is the Evangelion movies, by the way. And in You Cannot Advance, there's a song that Makuro sings that, um, you know, in this in, in Danganronpa Despair Arc, where Shinji has to save Rei, save Rei from this angel that has consumed her because, because he wants Rei to be happy. And Rei wanted him to be happy because she didn't want him to pilot an Ava again because you know, she wanted to do it for him. She wanted to save him. Yet this angel was proven too powerful for her, and it was too powerful for Mari to ever fight this angel. And Shinji comes in to defeat the motherfucking angel and kicks its ass. And then that song plays when he tries to save Rei from being killed. And... <laughs> Seeing that song of an image that's supposed to be beautiful, Rei and Shinji getting back together and having one last hug 
before the destruction of humanity. That is less awful. That is, that is, that is, that is at least a heartwarming ending, even though it is a more depressed, it's a depressing ending, yet, 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 you know, yet it's a more, you know, heartwarming. However, in this, Mercuro sings it, and everyone goes batshit crazy because they all kill each other because they had options. One, Mercuro will kill them if they don't kill each other, and two, Junko has a bunch of secrets and leverage to get people to fight. Like, oh, if you don't fight, I will release these secrets to the whole world and you will be embarrassed. And apparently that gets everyone, like, intensely wanting to kill each other because all the secrets that were laid down before them, oh... I guess they were some nasty ass secrets that made them not want anyone to know. So, what do they do? Kill each other. Oh boy. <laughs> and that song played and it is graphic. I'm not going to listen to that song the same again without thinking of the students kill each other in the, in the most atrocious tragedy ever. And how did this tragedy started? And while, Jun while Junko had these pe kids kill each other, why well, Junko releases the secrets behind Hope's Peaks Academy's evil deeds of human experimentation, of course, while also framing Izuru in the process. Yep. Yep, Junko looked like she had a total hard on for Izuru Kamakura. But in fact, she just used him as bait to go and help her out in her little scheme for people to have an ultimate despair. Yeah, that's the reason. And Junko has succeeded in that. And the scary part is everyone is now rioting outside the school of Hope's Peak. And the only students I see inside the Hope's Peak Academy is the students... You know, she that 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 Chisai is uh, looking after. Oh, it's scaring me because I swear to God, what if this ends up being like Devil Man Cry Baby, where no one wins, like everyone dies, like, huh? And Devil Man Cry Baby made me depressed. That's the anime I binged where I loved it at first, where it was so insane and over the top, then it became depressing, sad, and heartbreaking as soon as that climax came. I mean, God, <laughs> this is, oh, I don't know if I could continue watching this. This is already breaking me already, and I'm, I'm not okay with that. Even Chiaki looks so distraught about it. I mean, it's good. This is interesting how we know how Junko did it. How Junko started this whole thing. How she started the whole tragedy and everyone being falling into despair. It's nice and interesting to find out about it. Which is cool. Like it's nice to find out about it. It's nice to know. It's cool to know like how how this all started. What was this violent massacre that occurred? What was going on? On like, what caused it to transpire? And you can. And this is what it shows. This is the origin of all the things that happened. That was left us questioning what was going on in the games. And you know what? I would have been fine without knowing what happened and left it all to the imagination. But this anime likes to show you what happened. And that's pretty cool to find out what happened. Find out what caused this all to transpire and all that. So, let's go to 8 and see how much more worse it could get. 
Oh god. Also, every time Mikan is clumsy and falls down, she's always in a lewd position where something is covering up her crotch area and she's tied up in a lewd situation. Like, remember that in Danganronpa Goodbye Despair? Where she was all in that lewd situation where she was like, Oh no, I fell down in the food! And she's all like covered up in food and then there was a food, there was like a, like a plate of food covering her crotch area. This happens so many times in this anime, including when Makuro ties her up with a fucking mouse, mouse and a keyboard. And the keyboard's covering up her area, like my god. Poor Mikan getting into lewd situations. Though, to be fair, I don't see her complaining, honestly. She was willing to give up her virginity to the imposter student. Because <laughs> she was thinking, oh no, it's just like those hentais that play late night on television. <laughs> and she was about to give it up. And it's like, oh, we're not going to do that? Okay. To, to be honest, I think Mikan is a is a freak. <laughs> it's always the shy girls that are so kinky. <laughs> it's not a lie. It's true. Trust me, I've seen too much animes where the shy girl has so many lewd thoughts. And they hide it. They don't they don't blatantly say it. They don't blatantly say it actually. But you know they're thinking it. <laughs> sometimes they aren't, sometimes they are. Mikan is one of the girls that are thinking it. <laughs> oh boy, let's get back to eight. <laughs> I'm at the breaking point of tears right now because I'm scared. So, so Mikan is already calling Junko her beloved because apparently the reason why Mikan loves Junko and why she is so head over heels for Junko it's because that she was shown the video that Junko made. Junko made a video of the, the, the um, student council of uh, them murdering each other and she used the, the hypnosis, the brain manipulation to hypnotize and manipulate the brain of people to have the side of hope and despair to make them murderous killers or something like that. And that was just a taste of what Junko had in store. So Junko is clearly the cause of the anime to manipulate everyone to be psychopathic killers to murder each other in a mutual killing, basically genocide. Oh, mass genocide. And Ryocha's not having it because he did it on accident. And I thought that Junko held him on gunpoint and say, make this anime bitch. But apparently she didn't. She made him he made him do it unknowingly, knowing that he was gonna hurt people. And that is that's bad. Nagito came back. I don't know how, you fill in the blanks. All I can say is, he got lucky, and I'm guessing a helicopter came to save him. Also, Nagito's got a gun. <laughs> and tries to shoot Junko with it. However, oh yeah, that's it. They try to look for Mikan because Mikan is missing and they have to find her. Because they're all worried for her. And Nagito gave them a clue information what will happen. And by Nagito's luck, or as he likes to say, by chance, he asked for Pekko's help to stop Makuro from ever interfering with his luck. So he, she, he asked Pekko for help. And Makuro is now Makuro and Pekko Pekoyama is like fighting each other, which sounds awesome. And everyone is looking over to find Mikan. And Chiaki and and Nagito go and find this secret little passageway. Again, Nagito's luck, he found it by chance. <laughs> and he finds the secret room where Ryocha's being hidden away from. Junko sees them and, and then Nagito tries to kill 
Junko. However, his luck got counter. However, Izuru comes in the room, and Nagito tries to shoot Izuru, but the gun is jammed. Why? Because Izuru's whose luck is um surpassing over Nagito's luck. Look, where Izuru shoots the gun and attempts to kill Nagito by shooting him in the chest. However, Nagito, the lucky bastard he is, his handbook look, deflects the bullet. Lucky fucking boy. <laughs> hey, that boy lucky. And Chiaki seeing Izuru, and I was like so scared, like, oh, she doesn't know it's 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 him. She doesn't know it's Hinata. She doesn't know it's him. Um, she doesn't know. But then at the end of the episode, after you see Chizai running towards to the entrance of where the secret passage is, she's she's fearing that she won't see her um her friends again. Though to be honest, she is gonna see her friends again. Only she is going to be in the side of despair when she comes back. Which is going to be the saddest thing ever. <sighs> I am like close to crying right now because this is not going to end well. I'm going to burst out crying, I swear to God. <sighs> Episode 9 now. Oh God. Mm, no, no, no. Oh, no. No, this is... We're already in the danger zone at this point. Oh, fuck me. This is bad. That ending scene, that ending scene in episode 9, that is... Every time that Chiza uh, smiles in the anime, she smiles to show that she that you're safe. Like every time she says something confident, like "Hey, I'm your teacher. I'm always here to protect you." Like she was, she meant it in a sense of confidence. Like "Hey, I can do this. I'll help you." Like Chiza was like always ha confident. And that smile felt like, hey, you're being protected, you're being, you're safe, you're fine. I mean, her words of wisdom will help you, and she will do anything to protect your students and get, and see to it when the job is done. But this time, that smile is fucking menacing. When Shiaki got pushed by Mikan, because Mikan's been possessed, and... And now she sees Chiza, which is not, which would have been a good sign, but it's not a good, a good sign at all that Chiza's there. And that is, and that final shot in that episode, it is just the, is so menacing that that smile is not positive anymore. It is evil for intent of killing. Oh my god. They fucking clockwork orange Chiza. They strapped her to a chair, and she was so powerful enough to resist the brain manipulation for him for being hypnotized into loving despair. Because she was thinking about oh I got one of her friends that she loves very much. And Makuro had to stick needles in her brain to rewire her to make sure that whatever is making her cling on to hope she that she would forget it oh god oh god Nagito's fine they took him to safety and Chiaki convinces her classmates to go help her out in the dire need to save their teacher and she is she gives the, she gives the um students hope to carry on and Jiaki is that light hope that the shimmering of light of hope that Nagito has mentioned and Nagito is right that Chiaki is the sign of hope she is the light to that will keep their hope shining 
Uh, but we got two episodes left, and I feel like... Oh, no, Chiaki's gonna die. I just know it. I, I fucking know it. I was spoiled, okay? I got spoiled on it because I, I was trying to look up Chiaki images on Google for a, a bit of a thumbnail for a video I was doing, and then it said Chiaki's death. And I was assuming, oh, it was the death of her because of what happened to her. Because I was looking up images after she died, supposedly died, in the trial, the class trial she had, where she was the one that killed uh, Nagito without knowing she did. Oh, God. Oh, fuck me. But now, the more I'm thinking about it, maybe it's the death of her in this anime. And that's not good. This is gonna fuck up my mentality. I should not have done Danganronpa. I am, like, really in full-on depression mode right now. And I don't think Danganronpa is helping with my depression whatsoever. It is making me not hopeful for my future. Like, oh, this... You would think that at the beginning of the anime, you would hope for a positive, more light-hearted, like, version of the spare arc. Like, oh, what if this never happened? What if Hajime never agreed to the fucking, uh, situation of being the, uh, the, the, the symbol of hope for the experiments that Hope's Peak did to him? What if he said no? I mean, if he said no, there would be no Izuru Kamakura, and fucking Junko has to go and find another way how to expose the Hope's Peak Academy. Oh, and he would have hanged out with Chiaki more. But he didn't, because he wanted to help impress her and be talented, and say, like, I'm gonna choose my path, and I'm gonna choose the path that I think is right. And it wasn't the right path, but Hajime fought in confidence that he would mean he would mean something in the world. Oh my god. <sighs> I gotta get through this. But tomorrow I will, because I'm tired. It's late at night. I had to do something uh, so early on that I had to delay me binging. Don't want for free, but it will be the same video. This is gonna be the same video. I will wake up, do stuff around the house, and then watch it. Don't worry, this episode will go out on the day I plan it to come out. And once I'm done with the spare arc and hope arc, and then Nagito's OVA, I'm gonna be streaming. No one will know when I'll stream, but I'll stream. Because if I do stream, that means I finished the anime. I just haven't posted the videos of my reviews yet. Anyway, future me, on to episode 10. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm legit fucking crying up through that. Chiaki was an AI program in Danganronpa 2. She wasn't actually there. There was a reason for that. Why she wasn't actually a person who had to be repaired, who had to be... Who, where they had to remove the, the remnants of despair out of their bodies because she wasn't a part of the remnants of despair. Junko killed her. <laughs> it 
which I can see why Nagito is mad and he and becomes this person that wants nothing but hope and how he learned how despair will give him an even greater hope after seeing his friend die and that was Chiaki Nanami but I think what hurt me more was that Hajime was still in there even as Izuru he was still Hajime inside Chiaki was still alive pierced and bloodied up and slowly dying and crying that she doesn't want to die and Izuru picks up her little hairpin and then he starts crying even without knowing it because Hajime was still inside of him this whole time even if he lost his memories he still remembers her inside somewhere We have another episode of Despair Art. I don't know if I can continue. <laughs> Chiaki. I know that somewhere out there she can be alive still. Like, maybe that AI program of her is still out there. And she'll be still there. Like... Didn't she say that she'll always be with him, Chiaki, when she's saw Hajime again? That's why Chiaki was hopeful in the simulation. They had her memories in there. I guess it was nice of her to see her friends again. But she knows that she has to sacrifice herself one again in order to save them and help them live their lives for a more hopeful future. Oh god. This is how they become remnants of despair. That seeing Chiaki die, she was Nagito said it himself, that she was the light, she was the shimmering hope that the class the, for the for everyone in the class and that hope is gone because of Junko fucking Enoshima <laughs> you know I'm starting to lose my like uh, like for Junko I mean I can still like her but right now I hate her I hate her because she killed Chiaki as much as I liked Junko in the first game, and the second game, and how she was fun and all that. Even though she was a psychotic bitch, I did like her as that psychotic bitch. But then, knowing that she killed Chiaki, a, girl, a character that I legit love. Because she was a nice character. She was... She was everything. She was caring. Hing, she was loving. She was even a... She was just the best friend you ever, ever had. She... Maybe much of a loner, but she tries her best to be a good friend and socialize more. She does a lot of that in 2 and in here in the Spare Arc. She was a good in person, a great friend. And she still is to me. Yes, I'm crying over a fictional character, but that's how good the, um development of Chiaki's character is in the story like you start to when you get so emotionally attached to a character because you start to learn about them more you start to know more about them it's like you actually are being friends with them while watching it even though you're not a part of it you still feel like Chiaki is opening up to you and actually being a friend and that's me liking her more because you know I, I did actually hung out with her more in 2 because I always wanted to hang out with her more every chance I could get because I was scared because again, 
just like how I was spoiled that she would die. That's just like how I was. I got a spoiler that she would die in this. Um, I was spoiled also that Chucky was gonna die in um, in uh, Danganronpa 2. But I didn't know if Chucky was gonna kill someone or or that she was gonna get framed. And she did kill someone, but unintentionally. And that's why I was so scared, and I was like hanging out with her for, for every moment I got, because I didn't know which trial she was going to be taken out of the picture. I'm going to miss Chiaki. Until V3, because V3 has like this, you know, kind of like dating sim almost kind of game going on. I don't know what it is, like, it's a game that you can play that you get to uh, interact with all the characters from all the, all three games, so, who knows. Let's get to 11, and then after that, I'm gonna jump into a Hope arc. Because, you know, I'm gonna finish this anime so I can stream V3, probably today, probably tomorrow. You know, I'm gonna miss Chiaki. I love her. She was the best character ever in the Danganronpa series. She still is to me. I don't think anyone can top Chiaki, in my opinion. I know, I hear that, um, what's her name? Uh, there was a girl in V3, I don't remember who, but I hear she's good too, but to me, Chiaki will be number one. Anyway, let's just jump on to 11. This ended fucking sad. We all know what happened. They become the remnants of despair, and we all know what's gonna happen in future arc. But you see, like, Junko trying to figure out if Makoto Nayegi is gonna be a danger to her plans. Which he is going to be, it's just that she doesn't do anything about it. She finds out he is also an ultimate lucky s student, but she thinks it's not like Nagito's, which I'm thinking, yeah, because Nagito's is just so unnaturally lucky. Like, his luck is crazy. Like, it just, it's insane. But Makoto's is pretty normal. Like, it's not over the top as Nagito's, but... You know, I always I always said that Nagito was kind of a parody character of Makoto. And I think it's because the way he dresses and the way his hair was all crazy. I was thinking he was more like Nayegi in a in similar way because all he can talk about is hope and despair. While Makoto was in the side of believing in that hope and he would always have a speech for everything that could that he want everyone to be happy because he's a protagonist. And Nagito has done that too, only he is more crazy in that way, where he's like, this is a stepping stone for, for our hope. And it's sad, this, this is the most depressing thing ever, but you know it's gonna have a positive end to it all. Like, this is the beginning of the uh, story of of how they got into the school, how they how things went to shit. Like this is the origin story of how it all happened. Like I have said it before, I would have been fine not knowing what the hell happened. Like I didn't need an origin story, but honestly, this was actually pretty done well because mostly people who do origin or prequel stories of stuff that sometimes you don't need answers for in a game or a movie, you just come up with a way, like, you know, with, uh, the only example I can give, like, what would, what the hell was the Kessel Run 
to Han Solo in the Star Wars movies, and they showed that in Solo. And in Solo, it was alright. I mean, it was cool, but it was alright. I didn't need to see it, but they made it anyway. Here, they showed it, and I didn't know that I actually wanted to see that, because it did fucking made me depressed and sad. And that's why it's called Despair Arc. Despair Arc has no fucking remorse whatsoever to make you positive or happy. It's to make you depressed and sad. But you know that there's going to be a positive outcome to it because you know that you because you played the first two games and know that things will get better. However, in Future Arc, what made Hajime fall into despair again? Was it the knowledge that there was actually a Chiaki in the real world and finds out that she's dead? Was that the knowledge that broke him? Knowing that Chiaki actually died and the girl she was talking to in the, um, in the, uh, in the game, in the simulation, was just an AI program? If I'm wondering... Which, I'm guessing that... If Makoto and all the others, like Byakuya and Kirigiri, like they had to look up the roster of this class and realize that there's no Chiaki Nanami in this, uh, in this place. So they had to program her to make her act and feel like Chiaki somehow. I don't know if she had the knowledge that the real Chiaki died or whatever, but... And they probably had some information on her or something to find out what she was like in real life and how to really get her personality down pat, which is a, which is a hard thing to think of what will happen. It probably was from what Izuru saw in her at her last moments and what Hajime could remember of her, that they could try to, try to re, uh, by trying to reattach in the memories that he lost, probably, that they had to find of her, or whatever. Or what the, or what the class members remembered of Chiaki. And, I don't know, it's like... This has been like, the emotional roller coaster that I am not recovering so far from because it just... It just broke the fuck out of me. And it was good. I liked it. It was interesting seeing how everything came to play, how Junko's plan came to be, and poor Makuro. She does not even know it yet, but she is gonna get betrayed by her sister. <sighs> yeah, Junko fucking, like, talks her down, like, make her feel like shit. Yet Makuro still loves her, either way. So, Jesus. <sighs> Makuro deserves better. She really does. I want to learn more about Makuro as a character. Like, she is a soldier, but... I know there is a there is a novel in, um, called Danganronpa If. In um, in two, I already deleted two. Not like completely. I can download it again and read it because I still have the saved memories uh, of my of my game save. But um, like Makuro, like I want to know more. Like why with Junko? Why with everything? But I think that would be for another story and another time. Who knows? Hope Arc is next! Which I'm really confused to wonder, like, in the anime, why wasn't there an anime of, uh, Danganronpa 2? Like, there's an anime for Danganronpa, the animation, but I guess people were like, Can you not do an anime of the first game and the, and the second game? Can you just... What I guess people didn't like. Maybe it didn't get a good re a reception as the video game did. Like, maybe no one liked it, and they were like, boo, and everyone's like, fine, we'll just go to the prequel and sequel arcs, then. Fucking, fucking. 
But, yeah. The spare arc was interesting. I love the character is developing. Even though there's not much to develop with the characters in the in the anime, which I'm guessing it's because like you already know who the hell they are because you play the game. You don't need that much information about them because you play the game, so you know who they are, you have a connection with them already. Which is a fair point. That's true. You don't need much background in the story because you've already played two and everything so yeah that's true and but learning more about the important characters that you felt like needed more character development like chiaki hajime nagito he's one of the few um that and um chisa and sakakura and they they and junko you the these characters you needed more background on more about how this came to be how the story unfolded how everything got uh and got got topsy-turvy to shit i think that was the best part about it you got to learn more about chiaki you got to get more learn more about hajime in a way and got to see him as izuru and what izuru was like and because you only seen Izuru in few bits and pieces from Danganronpa 2, from uh, from uh, Despair Girls, and did I like Izuru in two? No, I just found him, I found him uninteresting at first, but then he became much of an interesting character because you learn more about Hajime and why he did it, why he became Izuru, and it's actually pretty. And then Izuru becomes a more interesting character. The more you learn about him and what he is like. Because I didn't know much about him in 2. I didn't know much about him in Despair Girls. But here, in Despair Arc, I got to know him a little bit more. And that was pretty interesting. <sighs> so, everything has been used. Because Junko has leverage against everyone. Because she knows everyone's secrets. She can manipulate it in many ways. So anyway, we're gonna go to Hope Park soon, and Despair Month will be continuing later on this week. So I'm near Bikoshi. I'll see you guys in the next video. Boop boop boop. I am the god of this new world. I'm gonna do it. I'm seriously gonna do it. I'm seriously really gonna do it. Hey, hey, want me to squish you in between them? Oh, what kind of man isn't game. excited by big women? You don't have to say, who are you talking to? It doesn't concern a chump like you. Before that, every time a computer froze, I used to put it in the microwave and nuke it. I happen to know 17,082 ways to do that. How should I put this? I was just goofing around. Who's gonna have to suck it down? That sounds like I have the same an voice actor from Yuhiko. I already know who it is. It's the one right there. Next to, next to the guy with the red the shirt. That is... Do you guys know about an artificial intelligence called Alter Kapit Ego? Junko fucking Anishima!